You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right. We took some time to answer some listener questions the last couple of weeks, but we're now into the heart of the earning season. So I'm going to talk about a diagonal today. And as always on Options Playbook Radio, it's not meant to be a recommendation. We just consider these paper trades. But I want you to think about stocks that you might want to speculate on earnings. There's definitely, since the pandemic has happened, since the March lows, there's been definite winners and definite losers. The airline industry in the loser space, a lot of the online retailers in the winner space. Now, one of the online retailers that doesn't get a lot of press is actually eBay. And they're going to be announcing earnings on the 28th of July. So I'd like to look at these diagonal spreads going into earnings. You can pick whichever underlying you'd like to maybe consider one of these on. Now, this is going to be a speculative trade. It's not for the light of heart. And we're going to do a diagonal to try to reduce some of the options premium going into earnings. Now, one thing that that is interesting about this marketplace is that the VIX stubbornly will not go below 20. Right now, today, the markets, it, it is the 22nd. It is a Wednesday. The markets are open. The VIX is trading right around 25% implied volatility, which would be considered high in normal times, but is actually fairly low since we've had the the downturn of the pandemic. But that VIX just will not seem, no matter how high some of these indexes are going, starting to get back towards their all-time highs. The NASDAQ is at an all-time high. The SPX is, is fighting back to the uh, highs before the pandemic started. But yet the SPX, the fear index, still is staying around that 25% implied volatility level. And all the stocks in general are inflated as far as implied volatility, just in general, relative to prior to the big downturn. So with that said, that means that there are some premium in all the different expirations, not only the expirations that are containing their earnings, which have been rocking and rolling this week. Uh, Tesla announced earnings yesterday. We had Microsoft announce earnings. We also had uh, some of the airlines are starting to announce earnings this week. A lot of people are going to be keeping their eyes on that. So we're going to look at an earnings in eBay next week, and we're going to try to set up a trade that will speculate to the upside on eBay. So how are we going to do this? Well, 
inside the options playbook, you could look at two different sections. To me, this trade is going to be called a diagonal spread. That's the simplest uh, definition of what we're doing. But it's also going to implement some of the thoughts that are behind the fig leaf. Now, the fig leaf usually deals with longer term option contracts. But the big thing that we emphasize is that we're going to buy an in the money option contract with a delta that's fairly close to 80. That means that you get a lot of stock price representation. Another thing that it means when you buy an 80 delta option contract, you're buying much more intrinsic value than you are time value. And because of the fluctuate, because of the high implied volatility that we are seeing in a lot of the different expirations and a lot of the different un underlying stocks, we're going to pay a lot of attention to the amount of time premium that we're dealing with. And that's why we are actually going to sell an option contract that's out of the money, that's a short-term option contract. And we're going to buy an option contract that's longer term, that will be will have an expiration after the earnings announcement and that option contract will be in the money and it will ha it'll be a fairly expensive option contract but not expensive relative to the time premium. All right, so let's jump into the strategy and I want you to keep those thoughts and think about companies you may want to speculate on and practice the strategy because Options Playbook Radio is all about practicing first and implementing later, right? So our paper trade for this week with eBay, the markets are currently open. I took a snapshot of, of the eBay option chain inside the Ally Invest uh, trading platform. And we have eBay, tra eBay trading right now last at 56.31. It's down 29 cents. We have the earnings announcement coming out on the 28th. So we are going to buy an expiration after the 28th, the 31st expiration, and we're going to buy the 52 strike call, so fairly deep in the money. And then we're going to sell the July 24th expiration, 57 strike call. Now, we're going to get this entire trade done at the midpoint, the markets are, are, are really tight in eBay. They're very solid, penny-wide markets. Um, and we're going to try to get this done, if we could fill it at the midpoint, of $4.53. That's where the quote is at right now. So $453 for every one-by-one one diagonal spread that we would do in eBay. All right. So... That's the trade. Now I want to talk about the setup of the trade because I think that is more important than actually the forecast or anything or, you know, why are we messing with the short-term option contract to go along with our long option contract go that will exist after the earnings announcement? And here's the reason why. If I look at the Ally Invest option chains, I can see that the July 24th expiration, that means we have, we're taping on a Wednesday, we have all day Thursday, all day Friday before they expire. And that uh, expiration is still trading at, on the at the money option contract, that at the money call that we're selling has a 42% implied volatility. Now that's high relative to what implied volatility was last year on eBay, right? And and that does not contain the earnings. So there's still some juice in that option contract. As a matter of fact, just looking at the quote, the bid is 46 cents, the ask is 48 cents. Now we're not that far out of the money. We're 69 cents out of the money on that 57 strike call two days remaining, but we're still looking to capture about 46 cents on the bid, 47 cents on the midpoint for that option contract with only two days remaining. So we're bringing in that time premium. I feel, To me, I feel like that is a decent amount of premium for an option contract on a $56 stock that's 70 cents out of the money. Now, could it move 70 cents? Yeah, we'll address that a little bit later on. Um, but 
Now let's look at the 52 strike call, the July 31st expiration. That call option at the midpoint is right at $5. So the math is really simple. You take five, you add it to 52, you get 57. You subtract, you subtract 5631 and you come up with 69 cents worth of time premium. So my whole goal here is that Maybe I could get into uh, uh, an option contract long. We're going to be spending a little bit of money here, you know, $453. And don't forget to add commissions. It's always important. Uh, so that's a fairly uh, hefty amount. But I really don't want susceptibility to, to time decay or implied volatility fluctuations. So if I do that, I, have, I am buying $0.69 cents worth of time premium, and I am selling – 47 cents worth of time premium, let's call it. So I have very little susceptibility to time premium and time decay and, and implied volatility fluctuations. I am just participating in the movement of eBay. Now, let's talk about what we would like to see happen. Ideally, the best case scenario here is that eBay would start drifting over the next two days towards that 57 strike call. That would be the ideal scenario because my goal, as I'm stating it, is I want to be able to get long an option contract going into earnings and not pay a lot of time decay. Now, I have no idea if eBay's earnings are going to be good, they're going to be bad or whatever. I'm just picking one of the stocks that is on the online retail space and the name's not Amazon. <laughs> Interesting enough, right? So it doesn't get a lot of, it hasn't got received a lot of uh, attention, but the stock has done well overall. Uh, eBay has, has, has performed very well uh, since the March lows. So with that said, we're looking, uh, I'll, I'll reiterate the trade again, and then I'll talk a little bit about the, what we'd like to see happen going into that earnings or going into the first expiration, actually. So the stock right now, eBay, we're taping Options Playbook Radio. And it is Wednesday, July 22nd. The market is not quite closed yet. The last trade on eBay was 56.31. It's down 29 cents. We are buying the July 31st expiration, 52 strike call. Selling the July 24th expiration, 57 strike call. We're doing this for a net debit of $4.53 to the account. That's $453 plus commission that will be our max ex, our, our max risk going into that first expiration once i that entire trade let's say we execute that trade we are going to purchase uh about 69 cents worth of time premium and we are going to be selling about 47 cents worth of time premium that's going to give our susceptibility to time premium erosion and fluctuations uh, in implied volatility to $0.22 cents or $22. Now, if I put this trade on and for some reason eBay skyrockets before earnings, well, that's not a good thing. I, I really don't want the stock to go to 60, 62, 63 because that near-term option is going to work harder against me than my longer-term option. But overall, when I set up this trade, one other thing that I paid attention to was the net deltas. The delta for the 52 strike call, is it was currently at, when I took that snapshot, 77.40. The delta for the near-term out-of-the-money strike call was at 37.50. So net net, and I'm just going to round up here, the delta, the net delta is 0 0.40. That means for every one by one spread that I do, I have a 40 delta on a position basis. If the stock does go up one point, I would expect to make about $40 on this position. If it does go up one point, we are going to be in the money on that short term call. What would I do? I would get out. I don't want to lose money on this trade when my forecast is correct. And if that stock continues on up and it goes up two points, three points, four points, that 
near-term option contract will work harder against me than my longer-term option contract. At best, they might go one-to-one. In other words, they might just uh, uh, break even overall on that trade in that my 52 option, uh, 52 strike call option, that's the July 31st expiration, uh, the delta might get to one and the near-term one, it gets to one. But overall, if I do get a one-point movement, I should be up 40 bucks on a $453 trade. Don't forget to put commissions in there. Not bad. Not a decent, a decent rate of return. Now, the market goes down. I can just get out of my position. My short-term call option that I sold should obviously be profitable to me at that point in time. If the market does go down, it's going away from that 57 strike. That would be a good thing. I could just close it out. So if the stock went down a couple of points before that uh, Friday expiration on July 24th, well, just close it out, move on. If, if, if that's the way that you're looking at it, you can do that and you don't want to wait around until earnings. So obviously you got to accept the amount of risk a lot of people would look at this and say, I'm, I'm risking about 450 bucks. If I lose half of it, if I get, if I, that thing is trading for $2 and 25 cents, that option contract, I'm just going to sell that long option, close my short one, get out, you know, move on to the trade. I was, the, uh, I was incorrect on what I th was thinking was going to happen with eBay. Now, the ideal scenario is that the stock just kind of stays where it's at or slowly drifts towards 57. Then I have a little bit of profit for my short-term call. If that happens over two days, I would be generating about 47 cents worth of income or $47 on my position. But more importantly to me, I would be managing time premium uh, going into an earnings uh, announcement on Stocks that are trading at higher implied volatility just in general because of the, the conditions of the current marketplace. And if I do that and that option expires worthless and the stock kind of stays where it's at, well, then that allows me to be long a call option on an underlying stock that I want to speculate on going into earnings and not have all the worries and concerns of the uh, time decay or or major implied volatility crush after earnings. All right. So that's going to be it for this edition of Options Playbook Radio. I want you to address this earnings week coming up and think about underlying stocks that you may consider doing this on. And the main reason why is that you can sell some real short-term premium against your longer-term options that you might want to speculate on. Now, once again, this is a speculation trade. And anytime we talk about trades around earnings, we are really speculating on the market. So you want to use your risk capital and make sure that you apply uh, that risk capital accordingly. You're not doing this as an investment. You're speculating on, on these trades. And uh, it, that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy@invest.li.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.